So hi guys, welcome back to Over the Line Football. It's been a, a very long time uh, since me and Jamie have recorded anything. Um, I like that. Every time I say it's for good reason, every time we say it's for good reason, it's just life gets in the way. We're at a weird age now, right? Where we have priorities and stuff. What's that all about? Um, but we still watch football, so we know what we're talking about. And uh, in that time, I've got a completely new setup. I'm now PC'd out, so um, there's lots more stuff that's going to be coming your way. So please keep an eye on the socials. Uh, over the line YT on Twitter, is that, that right? Should be the one. If not, just look for our channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The line, so there's links everywhere. Yeah, um, but yeah, this is the the first time that we've we've spoken in a while um, about football. We've done a few mystery shirt unboxings actually uh, to start the year off, and you guys seem to really enjoy that. So we will be doing more of them when we find places that will send us shirts. Uh, people want to send us shirts as well. We can look at their channel. So there's always our emails available, and we can obviously send you certain address or anything even where you can open shirts through there if you want to send us any shirts so it's always an option mm. we've been asking companies as well because we're doing this all for them back as well so we're not all these mystery box uh, all these mystery shirt boxes we're uh, doing ourselves out of our own money so mm -hmm. if people want to sponsor we can do that that'd be great so. yeah so basically today we're going to talk about thing that we sort of know best about and that is England um, it's a very popular topic because we did a lot around the Euros and obviously the Euros went really, really well for England, and we spent yes. a lot of time together during the Euros. Mm -hmm. And there is the small matter of a World Cup coming up in the winter of this year, which is mental, because obviously with the Euros being delayed, it feels like the tournament was just yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, but England have reconvened after a couple of months off for a couple of friendlies against Switzerland and the Ivory Coast uh, over this uh, international break. We have a, a useful-looking selection, I must mm -hmm. add. We've got the sort of selection here in front of us that sort of chopped and changed as time has gone on through illness and injury you know at the start we did have the likes of obviously on this list actually it has Bakayo Saka in but as we speak he's just gone on with Covid did you say? <laughs> yes and so Sam Johnson's not listed as well yeah Sam Johnson and well. he's been called up uh, Fraser Force has been called up but the less we say about that the better I think um, so yeah I mean I think obviously the, the three that stand out on the list are, are the debutants so Matt Gay uh, Tariq Mitchell and, uh, and Carl Walker-Peters the three Palace lads Two Palace lads. Oh, sorry, the two Palace lads and the Southampton Walker Peters. Southampton Walker Peters. Who am I thinking of? Then? Connor Gallagher's in the squad. And he's Connor Gallagher. <coughs> That's who I'm thinking of. Um, so yeah, is the is the one out of them three that that stands out to you that you're really excited to see? I don't know about excited to see, but in a previous video on our channel, I said probably the best players who not get an England call up, and I said Mark Way centre half mm. as one of the two defenders. Um, who I think should be in the squad in the next few months. And, I recall that video was in January and here he is in the uh, squad uh, Crystal Palace we know uh, done really well in terms of um, un under Patrick Vieira um, that's obviously why Tyrant Mitchell's in the squad as well for Crystal Palace mm. um, for me I was very excited with their partnership with Anderson and Gway at centre half and obviously Gway has now got in the squad he was as well the under 21's captain for England um, he's now made a step up to the first team which is always exciting to see um, and for me he's got experience in the Premier League now where he can do enough and on the international stage, I reckon, considering who he plays against week in, week out in the Premier League. Obviously, the best league in the world for me. And if you're playing against players in the best league in the world, I'm sure you could do it on the international stage as well. So mm. that's my opinion. No, I completely agree. And I think his inclusion is is definitely merited. What I'm interested to see is, is Tyreek Mitchell. I was massively impressed with him. Obviously, as a City fan last week, watching him against Riyad Mahrez, who's one of City's most informed players at the moment. He was, he was fantastic and kept him very, very quiet. And he's not on his own. Like he has kept a lot of tricky wingers quiet this season. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know about you, but I feel like these like left back spotting ones sort of up for grabs a tiny bit. You know, with obviously with Shaw's drop off in form has been quite dramatic since the you know the yeah. scoring in the Euro final that felt like a sort of justification for all the um, all the great form he'd shown for Manchester United and then throughout the tournament for England. And then his form sort of gone off the cliff for United. And Alex Tellis has preferred to him, especially since Ralph Rangnick's come in. And then Ben Chilwell, obviously, with a major injury, God knows how he's going to come back. And even so, he's not really featured for England heavily. I do think there's a massive chance for Mitchell to come in and impress. I don't know if you agree or... Obviously, there's like the Kieran Trippi that can play in that fullback position as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. Left, yeah. And um, we've seen in the Euros, Trippi has playing on the left. We've seen Saka drop further back as well. But in terms of forward at the back, if Southgate does play forward at the back, if you want an out-and-out -out left back, in terms of player who doesn't play more wing-back position like Trippi, I think Tyreek Mitchell can slot very well um, obviously like you said Luke Shaw and Ben Chilwell are your best options if, when they're fit um, and 100% they're the two best left backs England have mm. and for me I think Tyreek Mitchell now 
like exactly like said about a similar third mark where if you're playing the best league in the world consistently, I don't think there's why you can't do it in their first team turp in international. So I'm excited to see what he's like. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to be much impact in the obviously it's a friendlies games uh, rather than actual World Cup qualifiers and European mm. qualifiers. That game's been a lot more, but I'm I won't be surprised to see him in the next squad though either. Cause, mm. I mean, considering Palace keep the form they're going, considering I wouldn't surprise me if they nearly beat Man City recently. If they can keep the form up in the league, um, I wouldn't surprise seeing the free Palace lads in there again in the next squad. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Obviously, the last one just mentioning Car Walker Peters, mm-hmm. bit of a by chance, right? Because at the start they did have Trent Alexander Arnold and Reese James in the squad, and they've both pulled out with, I'd like to say, injuries, mm-hmm. injuries. Um, yeah. And then obviously Car Walker wasn't called up um, because he's not been playing for City recently with bands and stuff. And uh, Southgate said he wanted to try a few new players in that position. Obviously, yeah. Carl Walker's been sort of yeah. Gareth Southgate's ever reliable since he's come in in 2016. Um, so it's by chance, but a chance presents itself. Um, I want to ask you actually about the centre halves because uh, it was John Stones and Harry Maguire for the majority of the tournament. Tyrone Mings, obviously, at the start when um, Harry Maguire was injured. I want to talk about Ben White because obviously he's been brilliant for for Arsenal, especially in these last couple of months where Arsenal have sort of had a bit of a resurgence towards the top four. Yes. He's obviously probably on par with, you know, the the best ball players in the England squad. Yep. Is there a real chance for Ben White to nail down a spot alongside whether it be Stones or Maguire? I think it all depends which formation we play. For me if he plays if we play in a five at the back, Henry Sandy will play. Mm. In a four at the back, I'm unsure whether because I think it all depends what keeper we use as well. If Pickford's currently not the great run of form as it's Reverton, we like to play out the back um, with certain players. Nick Pope for Burnley doesn't play out the back, does he? Yeah. If he plays in the net, if he's not going to play out the back. And for me, if normally what the players do, they normally play how they play at clubs and bring it to this level. Yeah. So Milka Arteta plays out the back, so does Man City, so Stones and White the same. Harry Maguire is obviously now at my, my start playing out the back as well. Um, I think Ben White and John Stones are similar exactly pretty much very similar players mm. so for me I think if you have one low I think you're going to have one of those and annoyingly I think you've got to start Harry Maguire for me if actually in the World Cup like this, if this is our World Cup squad now I think you'd have to start Harry Maguire because okay. I think Ben White and John Stones are too similar for me and I don't think you can have two of exactly the same centre-halves pardon me um, so I reckon for me it'd be good to see if he plays Ben White and perhaps Harry Maguire to see what I like mm. but for me I don't think you can play Stones and Ben White, and obviously Conor Cody as well. I've got to say, in a good run of form moment as well. And yeah, of course, yeah, He's don't cut him out. Southgate likes him. You mentioned there, obviously, a potential for and what type of system he's using. Mm-hmm. Friendlies could give a chance to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think Pickford's spot as number one. I don't think he's been bad for Everton. Everton have just been bad in general. Yeah. And obviously, some people aren't a big fan of Pickford. I can understand that, mm-hmm. but I just think his spot is as safe as ever. You know, the two lads there. Well, obviously, Forster's come in, but Nick Pope, not really pulling up much trees at Burnley Henderson who was probably Pickford's biggest threat has just not played for United yeah. for the entire season so I think Pickford is as safe as ever so do you think there's a good chance that he will try out a, a four at the back system or a five out the back you know he likes to rotate between them or do you think he will sit on a certain one or do you think he can use both um, I would surprise me there's 45 minutes for each he might start four mm. at the back against Switzerland and then go to five at the back obviously if you're friendly you have like I think it's seven subs seven or five subs you'd have to make so we could use a lot of players and change formations at half time. Obviously, with the just kind of second like leaving the squad, it kind of leaves that five at the back option a little bit tougher. So it's surprised we just stick to four at the back currently for now, just for this squad because of injuries and illnesses. With the likes, like I said, Trent, Reese, James, and Kieran Trippier all, all injured, um, they can all play four like in the five at the back yeah. uh, places. So for me, he might play four at the back, um, but like I said, because there's so much room for wriggle in terms of players being substituted and how many you can make in friendlies and with Spray you see you might play 4-2 or rather 4-1 you might play two holdings with Rice and maybe Bellingham holding or might just play one holding but there's plenty, plenty of options like I said it's only friendlies mm, like we said already it's, it could be any team you wanted to play because it's just the friendlies so. yeah this is the last couple of international breaks before the winter I mean this is the last one before the summer and then we looked and it didn't look like there was one in October um, I didn't see one at least not 100% I, I would say if I was guessing that was to allow the Premier League to sort of not just Premier League all the leagues well yeah all the leagues <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and the cup competitions to yeah. sort of rattle through some games before it's massively disrupted by the World Cup mm-hmm. um, so 
So, what do you reckon about the England eleven? Do you reckon his England eleven looks much different? I, I don't want you to name it off the top of your head because obviously yeah. you, you know players are injured. God knows what's going to happen around that time. Uh-huh. I mean, to be fair, at the Euros, we were gambling on, on Maguire's fitness, and who else? There was one more player that was injured, wasn't there? There was Maguire and was Kane not hundred percent? Yeah, I think Kane was not hundred percent for the start, and then obviously he started the first game. Anyway, there was, there was some fitness doubts, and obviously we don't know what's going to happen when the World Cup runs around. Uh-huh. Um, but do you reckon there's any sort of major changes in the offing? Maybe at right back. It could be that. Obviously, we've not mentioned already like the likes of Sancho and Rashford aren't included in the mm. four positions in the squad. So, I mean, for me, for me, talk about that if you want, mate. Yeah, I mean that, yeah, yeah. that that Sancho and Rashford are sort of the main omissions, and say Walker as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but particularly Sancho, he's had a sort of good spell with United recently. I've seen a lot as well. Um, comparing Grealish and Sancho recently, obviously, I know you're a Man City fan, and mm. you kind of have preferences in terms of Grealish and yep. Sancho. Um, but they're two completely different players. As it's kind of hard for, to compare. Grealish is versatility as well for for Southgate. He can play in the D eight and he can play out wide. Yeah. So uh, Sancho can only play out wide. Mm-hmm. That's what I would say. Yeah. But I do. I, I think Sancho should have been in the squad. Yeah. Uh, especially if they're trying out all these youngsters. And uh, in terms of out and out wingers in the squad, I think we've only got one, and that's Ryan Hampstead. Everyone else in that forward forward line can play very versatile. There's not one like player like you said, like Sancho. You can play that one position, that winger be the best player in that position mm. but because you go so versatile I think that's what Gareth Southgate likes the versatility across the back line across the forwards so you bring anyone on always make an impact because they'll always like rotate across those four positions that's why he likes the likes of Phil Foden Jack Grealish and Millsby Throw they can play across any of those front three positions as mm. a 9 as a winger as a 10 Do you prefer that? Uh, currently well like I said I, I would like to see Sancho in the squad um, in terms of when everyone's fit I'd have Sancho in the start 11 over the likes of, I'd say, Sterling I'm currently. If so, you would. So your front three would be. I'd have Kane, Sancho. I'd have Sancho, and I'd have. Foden. Foden. Foden as a wing. So where would you play him? Would you play Sancho on the right hand side? Yes, Foden on the left. Foden left. Okay, I could go along with that. So, but like like, like I said, then he just likes Southgate lost like lost likes a lot of versatile players mm. and it's the same midfield as well like Jude Bellingham can play anywhere Ward Prowse Mason Mount Mason Mount don't include Mason Mount he can play further the pitch as well um, but yeah for me that, that's what I said about the, in terms of those full wing back positions in terms of five at the back because a lot of those players are injured he might just take mm. the fall of that, that system and we talked about youth a lot before the Euros and yeah. Southgate obviously went and trusted with his experience is it pretty much useless us talking about all these youths I mean we, we didn't even mention Conor Gallagher he's been obviously Outstanding uh, for yeah. Vieira and Palace this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, before the Euros, obviously, we were talking about that quartet of Foden, Madison, Mouse. Mount, and Grealish. Yeah, and then yeah. he obviously, he only really started with Mount the entire tournament. Yeah. Obviously, Foden started, but in the front three. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got to start with Sterling and Kane 100% because that is his trusted personnel. And to be fair, you, you know, mean it, the first game, or what do you mean in, in the Euros, I can guarantee you now World Sterling Cup. will be in the starting uh, World Cup. Yeah, will yeah. be Sterling will be in the yeah. starting eleven. I mean, we've good, and you know, and I don't want to sit here and slag the guy off. I mean, he's got an excellent England record. Yeah. You know, he's one of Chet Southgate's trusted personnel. I think, if anything, the summer show and was all last summer that he can be a reliable goal scorer for England in major tournaments, and not many players have been that in the past for for Southgate in particular. So, is it useless for us sort of talking about this? Is he going to go with the more experienced lads anyway? Is this just sort of a bedding in and seeing if anyone sort of sets the world alight so Foden's inclusion last summer for example Foden was included because his performances for City he won Young Player of the Year demanded that he got in same with Bakayo Saka is the thinking behind these selections that maybe some lad does sort of knock on the door and goes I'm sort of demanded to be included in this squad well we included before the Euros a 30 man squad then didn't we we had the likes of Ben Godfrey Ben White all playing that squad then obviously yeah. then Ben White got called to the actual first team squad then for the actual Euros mm. so this could perhaps that period as well but I think because you've got like a six month layoff now to our next friendly game or next next England game after these two, these two games it's kind of hard to predict like what squad's going to happen and as well there could be injuries that like we can't predict I mean they said already in terms of actual injuries, injuries I think there's five players why I would include who are injured bring him actually into the first team squad mm. so it's kind of hard to predict but for me uh, Sterling just start we've we've known already how how much he likes Sterling mm. um, I mean to fair, I think he was our best player in the Euros in terms of was it him and King at the joint most goals in the yeah I think I, but I think Sterling's Stir- Stir- got the bigger goals didn't they so so yeah I just it's, a, it's, a, it's an hard one to call um, and especially with none of them fit it's a bit of a bit of a yeah. bit annoying for Gareth to sort of assess the squad so we'd be hoping to have more players available. I'm guessing there's a 
another lot of friendlies just in the summer, just after the season's over. I'm not aware. I haven't seen anything yet. Obviously, these ones only got announced a couple of months ago as mm. well, so it could be something. I assume they will summer. be. I know they, they've extended the friendlies of some other nations because uh, Scotland have got another couple. I saw yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, sort of looking back on the final, just to sort of <laughs> end off, and I know we don't want to. Um, so taking it back to my own personal experience. I always think with finals, if a team's there for the first time and they lose, it always has a positive impact more than negative. At the time, obviously, the team is gutted, unless they're massively upset. I don't think Italy beating England on penalties was a massive upset. It's not like a, a Wigan versus City in the FA Cup final. No, I get you. But the lads have been there now. They've experienced it. They've been there, done that, sort of T-shirt, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I reckon that could have a real positive impact on them this summer. They know what it's like to face big teams in big tournaments, in big games, in front of a packed crowd. Don't forget mm-hmm. when we was full for the final as well. That could have a positive impact, right, going into the summer, uh, the winter. I keep saying the summer, the winter. We've said this plenty of times before, though, in terms of previous years, like the England squads in 2006 in that World Cup where we got to the quarterfinals. In, or they got Never to the, to the final, though. Never to I know, the final. I remember saying we got further along, we played the best players. Oh, this should work this year. This should work this year. This should work this year. Obviously... Now in the Gareth Southgate, we've in the most recent times, I suppose we've got we've got to semi final of a World Cup, we got to a final of Euros. Obviously, it's progression there. If you get to a semi final and the final, lose both. Obviously, the next step after that is to win. Mm. If this is the next tournament to win, obviously in the World Cup, or we'll not complain as like it's what's happened in the past four years. Um, is that success in the World Cup for you, semi final final? Is that what England need to get? I think the World Cup is very different to the Euros. Yeah, and for me, I think pers- I personally appearing personally I think the Euros is harder than the World Cup anyway okay it's in the summer teams seeing the World Cup like the likes of Saudi Arabia Egypt in the actual Euros I think Macedonia beat both of those teams like 3-4-0 personally so and I think Macedonia were the worst team in, in Euros so for me I think the Euros is harder than the World Cup obviously big big headed England fan here I generally personally think that Euros is harder to win than the World Cup obviously the World Cup you rather win the World Cup because again rather the Euros because it is the, the World Cup is the, yeah you're the, the best know. team in the world yeah, yeah. um but for me, I would personally I think uh, teams are actually better in the Euros. So if, to get into the final of the Euros and obviously not winning it, um, I'd be very happy if we got to the semi-finals. I think that would be successful. But obviously, like we saw in the World Cup, the terms of the line we had, the Colombia, Sweden, and then people say we lost to our first big team in Croatia. Croatia not even a big team either, kind of at that point. Yeah. So. It's kind of hard to say. We played in the Euro in the Euros. We beat Germany. We beat them. Like we said, we were only then when we beat Ukraine and uh, Denmark. And they're not big. It all depends what you guys are big teams. That's a problem. And it all all luck. If we won our group in the World Cup, we could have faced like we said, Brazil, Japan, because Belgium were mm. in our group, weren't they? So look, it's if, all... we, if we want to, if we want to, if we want to win these major tournaments, we've got to be playing these big teams. And I think beating Germany. Yeah. It was a big hurdle for England 100%. this summer. And I know, I know we in Germany weren't at their absolute optimum, but you know we faced a, a team that was got an incredible record over England, incredibly embarrassing record if you're English, and we, and we beat them. We beat them convincingly, really, on the day. Um, so, I didn't feel that during the well, game. I didn't feel that during the game, but it's never yeah. going to, is it? Um, but yeah, I think, we'll, I think we'll leave it there. Um, okay. That's been a nice little therapeutic chat. Do you your predictions for the game? About England, we can do. I mean, it, it just screams both of them. 2-0 both of them 2-0 2-0 do you reckon Gway, Mitchell, Walker Peters I think they all debut? do you reckon they do they'll all I think they'll, they'll all feature at some point every single player in this squad will oh, feature okay. at some point over the yeah. two games um, uh, maybe apart from Fraser Foster right uh, but <laughs> because it, I think Southgate might look at it like um, we've got such like a mixed squad you know in terms of players you know are never going to be part of the World Cup squad and then players that who definitely are, mm-hmm. you might just sort of mix a few with the uh, the experienced lads. Um, and obviously, he's got a big decision to make on Jude Bellingham. We didn't even think to talk about Jude Bellingham. Oh. Obviously, he's still smashing it at Dortmund. Yep. Uh, there's potential that obviously he could make a big move in the summer. I know it's just all speculation, but anyway, I think Jude Bellingham is another conversation for another day. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, it's been a long time, like I said, but. We are in a position now where we can start to record more regular. Um, we've got tons of ideas, uh, different ideas. Um, like you said, you really like the, the unboxing ones, but you also really like Jamie's little vlog to England. Um, yeah. And we've got 
real life ones pond hopefully soon um yeah so subscribe like all that stuff and we'll see you on the next video